Good morning, my seekers. Welcome to the existential shift, Morgane. Um, I woke up at six o'clock in the morning, a little bit earlier actually. Um, tried to go back to sleep, tried to kind of force it, but I couldn't. And I feel planetarian sh sh shifts deeply now. Not because I'm a professional astrologer, I'm actually not, I'm an intuitive astrologer. But I have this natural connection to source, which includes the planets and the energies. Um, and the evolution of the collective spirit. And yesterday was the 5th, right, October 5th, where Venus... Um, and now Venus is starting to retrograde in Scorpio. Now, Scorpio is my opposing uh, zodiac, I'm Taurus, but I actually deeply resonate with Scorpio and I'm really connected to its nature and, and the way that it seeks the truth at all costs and goes deep without fear. It kind of just dives into the ocean all the way to the bottom. It's that type of energy and then digs in the, in the sand in the bottom of the ocean and keeps, keeps digging until it reaches the core of the planet. Scorpio goes through the ocean, the Cancer, then it goes through the surface and the deeper parts of the earth the Taurus and then it reaches the core of the earth Capricorn that's how I see it anyway it just through the most intense deep zodiacs that I find personally the most spiritual other than Pisces let's say and to that energy Venus is retrograding and Venus you know she rules my sun sign Taurus and my moon sign Libra she rules both my yin and my yang my conscious and my subconscious my awareness and my depths so all that my yin and yang all my opposing forces are now that are ruled by Venus are now retrograding in Scorpio, my alleged opposition that represents how I seek truth, my life's journey. Sorry, I have animals around me. Not now, not now, no, go back, go back, go back. Akola, go back. Good dog. <laughs> what was I saying before nature came and be like, hey, I'm here, you're talking about me? <laughs> And it happened yesterday and conveniently enough I also had a major change yesterday a major shift both um, in the 3d aspect in the physical aspect my movement my location and in my emotional and my spiritual aspects It hurts and it's scary, but I also deeply feel the expansion. My spirit is expanding and I need my environment to suit that, right? Say you're a child and you, grew, and you grow up and so you need new clothes. And that's both exciting and sad at the same time. When you go to a new place, you get to meet new people, but then you have to say goodbye to the place that you have to leave. Because unfortunately, because we're in physical form, we can't be in two places at the same time. Well, our spirit can, astral projection, but our consciousness can't. Our, our awareness, or like our, our ego. That's what I was looking for. And I know it's why I woke up 
really early in the morning and I know it's why I couldn't go to sleep and, and I know it's why I had to do this video. I don't even know what I'm about to say. Like I didn't plan it. I'm actually going live in a few days on the 10th um, for you know questions, answers, and to convey with you guys. But I felt like I had to share and also ask the cards for messages, both for this um, situation and the energies right now, and for you guys if you're feeling the same, going through something similar, and you need some guidance. And you know, in Hebrew, there's a phrase said that says, "Tzarat rabim chatzin achama." When your when your troubles are shared with others, when you're not the only one on that boat, then it's halfway comfort. It's a little bit morbid. Oh, you're also suffering. Great, that comforts me. It's kind of selfish, but you know what I mean. Like, when you feel like you're not alone on a boat. I know there's a lot of talk, and I relate to that, and I respect that, uh, especially coming from astrologers that are professionally more cognitively knowledgeable when it comes to astrology than I am. Um, but I have to express my intuitive understanding of the next 40 days of Venus retrograding in Scorpio. So I know a lot of people say, I hear it, I listen to, you know, I listen to YouTube videos and I read a lot of articles. Hey, no barking. Oliver, Oliver. Sorry. I listen to a lot of uh, information uh, online and, and I read and I something that repeats itself is whatever comes in the next 40 days is could be um, an illusion uh, most likely temporary um, and then after that we will kind of wake up and be like oh what was that or okay it brought up something in us to heal to clear and then it leaves our life allegedly I connect to this retrograde from a different place. Those 40 days are extremely archetypal and symbolic. The number 40 um, has a very deep meaning and a de deep ar uh, archetype. Both in religion and spirituality, 40 represents the journey from one world to another. It represents a spiritual quest um, for enlightenment and kind of go through um, the portal between your old and your new, between one sort of existence to another. Um, you can see it in different stories in history, in religion, and in um, mythology. You can see the 40, you can see the 400, you, you can see the 4. 4 in normal, numeral normal, <laughs> Pythagoras numerology, more modern numerology, is it's true about that. I'm not, you know, denying it. It's the, it's the foundations, it's the structure. Um, but four also holds, especially from the Babylon numerology, which is the numerology that I connect with more naturally, just had it in me from childhood. Um, four is a very visionary number. It's the number of the prophet. Um, it's the number, four is reality, but it's the number of seeing to the future of the reality, which is why it's a number of prophets. Um, four can be misunderstood a lot. People who are, you know, who are uh, embodying the essence of four. Who kind of, you know, they tend to live in the future. They kind of see to the future. Um, sometimes, if they're lucky, they have a very strong connection to Earth, to the 3D. So they're realistic and they're, you know, their life is um, dogmatic and linear in a good way. In a connected way so they're not completely lost um, and some are just complete visionaries that are seemingly detached from reality it's not that they're detached from reality they are detached from the present reality and people see them as detached because they don't see what they see to the future um, and that's why 4 40 400 has that meaning because you would think okay why 4 with that journey with that spiritual expansion because four is the linear connection between current reality and future reality. So it's a very powerful number. There's a reason why a lot of 
clairvoyance and prophets and mystiques have those numbers either in their name or in their date of birth. And Venus retrograding now in Scorpio, she's doing it for 40 days. And in those 40 days, we kind of do what I just described Scorpio does through the ocean and then the earth and then to the core. Um, you can relate that with the mythical story of Persephone going to the underworld to unite with Hades. Now, originally she didn't go there intentionally to unite. Originally he, well, according to the myth, he fell in love with her and kidnapped her and basically took her from Earth, from being the princess of nature, the daughter of Demeter. And he took her from there to the under realm, to the underworld, which is the kingdom of the dead. Now, in Greek mythology, the kingdom of the dead isn't equivalent to hell in religion. It's not the bad place, the hellish place, hellish place where all the bad people go to. Um, it's not a world where you go to suffer and repent your sins. It's actually just the world where all the dead go to. So all the souls on the planet Earth, all the living souls, once they're done, they go to the underworld. So over there, where Hades rules, um, it's basically the most powerful kingdom because all the living go there and they just add and add and add. And after that, they don't go anywhere else. They don't go back to the surface. They don't go to another um, level, according to myth from the Greek mythology. So it's much bigger and vast and powerful than the kingdom of the living. So Persephone, on the surface, she goes down to the underworld, a dark place um, filled with demons and creatures and darkness and an unknown, uh, allegedly goes lost because she's also kidnapped, right? So sounds really bad and scary. But over there, she goes through a process, a um, initiation, should I say, of becoming the queen of the underworld of the most powerful kingdom known in myth. Not bad, not good, just everything, right? Okay, Chloe, go back. Oh, oh, go back, go back, not now, go back. Sorry, <laughs> I can't focus when, go back, go back. Good dog. Go back. Thank you. <laughs> Get snapped out of my... Like I'm into this. I'm in the zone, right? And I'm talking and I'm like, come back. <laughs> anyway. So what I'm trying to say is I feel like those 40 days, even if for some of you... And that doesn't say it's going to be bad or scary. It's just, it, you know, it's, it's an archetype. It's, it's an analogy. But if it will feel mysterious and dark and unknown and you might feel like you're hallucinating and you don't know what's real and what's not, it's not because it's not real. It's because it's new. It's not because it's an illusion. It's because it's the new world that you are now building that you are not familiar with yet. You're feeling it. I'm sorry. Chloe, go back. Go back. No, this is good, okay? Because we're not perfect creatures. I'm not holy. I get upset. I get annoyed. I love dogs, but sometimes they're being annoying. So I'm like, go back because I'm busy. You don't have to be Mr. Sun Sunshine if you're spiritual, okay? And this time frame, the next 40 days, is going to show you that. It's going to bring out you, whether you like it or not. It's going to bring your passion up, out. It's going to bring your anger out. It's going to bring your, your joy out. Don't get me wrong. It's going to be... <laughs> Um, a, a roller coaster of emotions and that's okay that's okay that's good it's how it's supposed to be when Persephone goes down into the underworld she's gonna meet all kinds of creatures there right she's gonna meet the bad guys that died and she's gonna meet the good guys that died she's gonna meet herself reflecting, <coughs> reflecting in their eyes so this is basically what you're meant to do in the next 40 days what we're meant to do in the next 40 days Oliver this is gonna happen. Oliver! Hey, Buena! Oliver! Buena! Bole po! Shani loet atzben alech, ani otsniya khotef et janana. Bemet. 
אתה תירגע ואתה תהיה כלב טוב, מספיק. Enough. I'm trying to talk to you guys. מספיק. Not editing this out. No way. Hi, this is me. If you're new to the channel, this is what you're gonna have here. Hi, this is me. No perfection. Mm-mm. Not claiming perfection. Perfection isn't real. So you're gonna meet all kinds of creatures who are basically yourself reflecting um, back at you through their eyes. Okay? Every emotion that someone stirs in you, every thought, every vision, good or bad, every self-existence is you. It's real. It's not, oh, who is this person? You brought this up. You brought this out in me. You made me be like that. No. You were like that. This person just helped you find, find out that you were like that. Own it. If you like it, empower it. Help it grow. If you don't like it, work on it. Change. Now you know what's in you. But nothing that is coming up, I think the opposite. I think that nothing that is coming up is going to be an illusion. I think everything is going to be very real. The real you from the past, the real you as a potential future self, the real present you, whether you are aware of it or not, it's going to feel like an illusion because, wait, who, what, are the, who are, what are these emotions? What is that reflecting at me? You are. Your vast, endless, infinite spirit and soul that is good and bad, that, that was above surface and was also below surface. In the kingdom of the living and in the kingdom of the dead. You're going to meet it all. And if you'll embrace it and own it, it will be wonderful for you. Highly spiritual. Highly evolutionary. But if you'll fear it, it's not going to go away. You might as well enjoy the ride. You might as well enjoy the ride. And the thing about why do I call it initiation By the end of those 40 days, closer to the end of November, say, I think she finishes its retrograde. I mean, she goes into Libra on November 1st, and then she finishes on November 16th or November 17th. And that's when it brings balance. Until October 31st, we're going deep to the imbalance, and that's good. That's okay. November 1st, we're starting to attain balance, retrograding in Libra. The zodiac of balance, of justice, of harmony. After we met all those creatures in us, all the truth in us, and acknowledged it and faced it, when we start retrograding in Libra, that's when we, we, we work on finding the balance between all these elements and all these forces that exist in us and, then, and therefore in our life. Um, so be very in tune in the next 40 days, in your initiation time. Be very conscious to what is going on. Listen. You know, hi. <laughs> can't you guys let me talk? No, all of you, I, mean, I can't focus like that. I can't focus like that. I need to give messages. I know, you're sweet. Okay, go back. Go back. <laughs> you know, go back. Go back. Hey, be good. Go back. Be very conscious of everything that is happening and everything that is coming up. Allow yourself to feel. Allow yourself to change. Allow yourself to change your mind and change your emotion. Be very forgiving for yourself. Look at it as like, try instead of feeling the pain or feeling the happiness in like a good or a bad way and judging yourself, try looking at it as an experiment, as if you are... Um, exterior to yourself and you're kind of looking at this time frame like oh this is interesting oh this is hmm, what does that mean so that way we'll make it easier on you to not be judgmental and just go through the experience and get the best out of it um, and by the time you leave that also take a breath you know be like okay what am I feeling about all this Oliver must speak This is, a, I'm so sorry, you know, like, because I have the very, very, very clear thread of thought that I want to express to you guys, and I have so many back noises, and 
that affects that affects you like you're listening to me and then I yell at the dog or something and it's like I get it and I'm sorry but actually it's very symbolic to this time because <laughs> things will come at you things will come at you and just no yes no yes no be like that be very vigilant um very intuitive very um sensor oriented how does this feel this feels good okay come in let's embrace this doesn't feel good okay get out zero judgment for yourself okay um and allow yourself to be seen by others right now i'm just going to be annoyed at them and occasionally we'll tell them to shut the fuck up excuse my language and i'm not going to edit this out i'm not because what do i have to be ashamed of this is life you know dogs bark this is life And you're going to have to handle life at its full glory. Or maybe you'll be like, oh, at its full horror, whatever. <laughs> or both, whatever comes along. What I was saying is, at the end of it, take a breath, you know. Be like mid-November towards the last third of November. Allow yourself, allow yourself to take a breath to make the assessments and the realizations before you make decisions now the reason i also i will also join to other astrologers and the advice of not making strong decisions that will impact your entire life or something you know in this time frame it's not because i feel like the knowledge that will come to you is deceitful the opposite i think all the knowledge that will come to you is truthful you'll get to see a lot of things in clarity for what they are it's more so about gathering more and more information before you make a decision. Because tomorrow something will happen that will make you think, oh, I need to do that. But then a week later, something else will happen that might give you a different point of view of, at things. Um, so let things kind of unveil themselves. Let your heart unveil, unveil itself to you. Um, let your mind reach clarity. And only then make decisions. That's kind of how I'm viewing the next 40 days. I'm mixing the cards because A, that's my nature. They're next to me. I have to mix them then. <laughs> like I can do it in my sleep. Um, and B, I want to see if there's any important message that I need to convey to you guys, my beautiful seekers. Three of Pentacles. Okay, Three of Pentacles, that's interesting. That's an, I wouldn't expect this message right now, but not in a bad way. It's actually a very positive message. The Three of Pentacles starts to build something towards the fort, towards the really strong foundations. And it's already tangible. It's the first tangible shape. It's the triangle, right? One, two, three. 3D. The first time we're meeting the 3D world in the tarot. One, it's the wholesome of the divine. Two, the divine splits into mundane existence and it's you know it's allegedly broken and now we seek each other to achieve divine unity once again and in the three we start finding ourselves in this new territory of the 3d of the kingdom of the life that is within this physical form that is not just a free roaming spirit so three of pentacles it's good we have our reality we have our work we have our relationships we have our creativity focus on that let that be your anchor. Let that be your grab, your grasp of reality. With mundane actions, okay? Get up in the morning, do the things that you need to do. But inside, at heart, and in mind, allow yourself to go through the process, okay? Allow yourself <laughs> to go through the, the spiritual and emotional journey. Go back, go back. I can't do this right now. I already played with you, and I will play with you later. No, and another one comes. No. It's like a zoo around me. <laughs> it's like animals are like, whoosh, whoosh. I'm busy, nature. I'm busy talking about you. Jesus, Moses, Allah, Buddha, everybody. Everybody. Hi, everybody. Hi, all religions. I'm not actually a religious person. I mean, I come from the Jewish religion that I highly respect. If I was like, 
if I were to be born to no religion at all and, the, and someone be like, you have to choose a religion, then cognitively, based on the knowledge that I have in all the religions, I would probably choose Judaism. So I'm happy I was born to the Jewish cult, Jewish religion, not to shade any other, <laughs> whatever, whatever. Um, but other than that, I'm not actually a religious person. Highly spiritual though. I appreciate the mythology. Shut up. Quiet. That's me. I appreciate the mythology and the symbolism and the culture and the poetry, but I don't appreciate the dogma and the chauvinism and the hatred and the wars. Let's face it, it's part of all religions. Okay. Okay, you guys need to shut the F up. Right now. Please comment, tell me if this video was super annoying because of all the animals being like, hey, and me being like, shut up, shut up, or if you managed to handle it. <laughs> I didn't plan it, so I couldn't, you know. One more message for my seekers for the next 40 days for Venus retrograding in Scorpio. Ooh, uh. <laughs> Okay. Hi, Scorpio. Hi, Rebirth and Phoenix. Same aspect, by the way, same concept. And Eight of Pentacles. So, the emotional aspect of going really, really deep into our emotions and not being shy or dismissive of how we feel or the process that we're going through, allowing, allowing ourselves to be burned by our feelings, to be burned by our process, and to reawaken, and all that while working our mundane life. It's going to be interesting because it's weird, right? This is like going through a spiritual journey in the mountains or in caves, strong meditations, ayahuasca. <laughs> All kinds of like spiritual awakenings, dark nights of the soul and such. And this is also waking up every morning and going to work. So this might really be inner. I want you to allow yourself to address your sexuality, your instincts, your desires your fantasies, Scorpio, your spiritual awakening. Don't judge yourself for how you feel. And this is very similar to this message that we've got in the beginning of the Three of Pentacles of holding on, you know, having the 3D reality be your anchor. Because this will actually really allow you to build foundations in the 3D world because the Eight of Pentacles is, is working towards the Nine of Pentacles great fulfillment when it comes to um, finances and independence so once you get to know yourself and you really own it and you feel comfortable in your own skin things start to really make sense in the 3d in the physical world okay Let's do another message from the Akashic Tarot, which are my new oracles. If you've seen my general readings, I've been giving messages to all the Zodiac with them. They're absolutely gorgeous. The Akashic Records, Akashic Library is uh, said to be all the information ever to, ever to have existed, nor to will exist, both in this uh, universe and in parallel universe, an endless infinite library of knowledge of the self, of the soul, and of um, the universal spirit. And the first message that I receive, Eight of Keys, the Master Artisan, Artisan, whatever you want, <laughs> me and my Hebrew. Eight of Keys, the Master Artisan. Take a look at that. I'm going to read it for you. I don't know myself what it means. 
but it really reminds me of the Eight of Pentacles that we just received. Yeah, use the next uh, 40 days to go into your Akashic Records, right? Meditate and ask for messages from your soul that is relevant for this lifetime, for this time frame in your life. Um, let's see. All right. The Master Artisan, upright. Inside a bright and bustling artisan's workshop, apprentices are busy at their workbenches. This is so Eight of Pentacles and Three of Pentacles. Oh my God. Which we just had. Which are arrayed with the beautiful fruits of their labors. The Master Artisan pours a number of beautiful, shining gems into the open hands of one of his apprentices. This card indicates that you now have the opportunity to offer your talents your purpose and your gifts to the world making a contribution to many don't be shy and don't hold back what you have to share it's not the time to hide your light under a basket as a matter of fact you may now find yourself teaching or training your skill set to others you may also be demonstrating your gifts and performing your talents publicly hi I think it's what I'm doing right now <laughs> even if your gifts lie in the ability for loving compassionate care you will be sharing those gifts with others. In this period of time, you can build your reputation and take advantage of the opportunities that come your way. So take action, put yourself out there, and let yourself shine. There is much beauty and empowerment for you to bring to the world. I think that's beautiful, and it really connects to the message of the Three of Pentacles and Eight of Pentacles, because in the mythology, the mythological um, aspect of those cards is not just work and money, I mean, seriously, tarot is so much deeper and wider than that. Why do people always like, oh, three of pentacles, uh, work, oh, eight of pentacles, uh, work, money. It's also the artist, the apprentice, the apprenticeship, the creativity. Earth is not just money. Earth is creativity. It's creation. It's mother nature. Okay. From there, it's also the physical world. So it can also express itself with career and money and coins, but not just that. So the combination of these two, especially with the message that we just received, is bringing your truth, your creativity, your knowledge to the world and maybe even making a living out of it. Now, listen, with that, we received the Queen of Cups and the Judgment. Now, the Queen of Cups, a.k.a. Uh, Scorpio, can also be November. So this is really resonating like the next 40 days throughout November is the initiation, the awakening, the judgment burning ourselves into the core of ourselves like literally uh, burning through the skin until we reach the dna inside the bones and rebuilding our skin from there and our flesh from there where you have the opportunity now to recreate yourself and it's not going to be something that is completely def different than you it might seem like it's to the environment even to yourself it's just going to be your own potential growing out of you growing out of the current walls that are suppressing it and not allowing it to express itself okay this is the skin the the, the skin the snake shedding its skin this is the sneak shedding its skin this is the snake shedding its skin this is the butterfly you know um the caterpillar melting down to its molecular molecular structure to its goo inside of the cocoon and then restructuring itself to the shape of a butterfly it was always a butterfly it just the molecular shape of it seemed like a caterpillar it just needed to go through the process of the initiation of those 40 days however days a caterpillar is a caterpillar sorry i don't know that i wish i knew and then make the connections but i'll check it out um it had to go through that but it was always meant to be a butterfly the caterpillar is probably probably like oh whoa what is that where did that come from this is new it was always in there it was always meant to be to come out Whoever will be discovered and from from the inside of you to the outside of you was always meant to rise. Okay? So this process of melting into our molecular structure to a molecular stru structural goop, it hurts. It's not easy. But if you have the understanding that this is what is happening, that you are like a caterpillar melting down in order to become your own butterfly if you have that understanding throughout the process it's much more fun 
seriously, it's much more fun. It's no longer painful. You know, like there's there's fear of an actual danger, and then there's a fear of being on a roller coaster and like diving in because you know this is just a momentarily excitement and a fear before you're gonna rise back up, right? So it's just adrenaline kind of enjoying the ride. Allow yourself to feel that. Allow yourself to feel that as opposed to being really fearful as if it's like real danger. You're not going to hell. You're going to the underworld. You're not going to be burned for your sin. You're going to be burned in order to get reborn. You are a phoenix. Hello, phoenix. Hi, phoenix. Hi, butterfly. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. No, it's not to take for granted. No, everybody's going through this. Why are you proud of me? First of all, you're watching this. You really care about this journey, which means you'll have better results, stronger results, faster results, which means it won't be painful for you. It will be actually pleasant. It will be actually pleasant. Like, you know, like it's not like pain, pain. It's like training pain. You know, like when you, you train really hard and it hurts and, it, and you're sweaty, but, but, you, but you also feel great because you know you're empowering yourself, right? And you're strengthening yourself. That's how I want you to look at it, Seeker. And the fact that you're here shows me that you're already somewhat looking at it this way, but you just need you just need confirmation. So I'm giving you that confirmation. If you if if there will come a time in the next month or so that you'll feel a little bit low or or worried, just go come back to this video. Rewatch this. You're doing great. And you're awesome. And I got you. We got each other. Okay? Um, yeah, general readings are already all up, all the zodiacs. So if you want to check out your um, October taroscope, feel free. You can watch, you know, your different aspects of your chart. Sun, moon, rising, Venus. I don't like to stop there. If there's something dominant in your chart, watch that. I, I always like to watch my midheaven, which is in Pisces. I really resonate with it. I also like to watch my opposing sign, Scorpio. I also really resonate with that. It's, it's my darkest aspect. You know, when you watch your opposing sign, um, then you watch your, you know, the other the other side of the scale that is still you. It's the same scale. You're in this part, okay? So you're Taurus over there. There's Scorpio. Still same scale. Get to know yourself on all the scale. Scales <laughs> on all the scale. Sorry, my English can be. Um, yeah, if you want to go deeper, there's also extended readings. So to your general readings, there are also extended readings on Vimeo. By the way, in case you don't know, I teach tarot. I have tarot masterclass also on Vimeo. I'm going to put all the links below in the information box. That will make it easier. Um, I have specials for my readings, for my uh, private readings. If you want to contact me, you can email me and schedule a private reading. Um, you can. I, I'll put all the information also below to, so you'll see your options for October. Um, and yeah, I do it internationally, so it doesn't matter where you are in the world, we can talk. And, oh, and soon there's going to be my live, my live Q&A. I plan on doing it on October 10th. I'll let you guys know. I'll pin it in the comment exactly what hour it will be. Uh, so stay tuned. It's going to be probably 10 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. That's how I, I think of it right now, but it might change. So stay tuned and you, you'll get to just chat with me and ask me questions and that will be super exciting. Um, ask me questions about, you know, general energies and spiritualities and, and could be psychology, could be anything. Um, but try to make it questions that the answer will, benevolent, will be benevolent and benef, benef, benefic to other people who are watching. Okay, we want to make it like a spiritual thingy. Um, a spiritual thingy. <laughs> Who gave me a platform? YouTube. <laughs> spiritual thingy. Um, that's it, guys. I love you very much. Comment your thoughts. If you haven't subscribed, um, this would be a great opportunity. And thank you so much for being here and for your support. I love you deeply and dearly. And sorry for yelling at the dogs. What can I do? Bye for now.